Hello and welcome to this episode of Business Spotlight, where we are joined by Sam Smith from Does QA. Sam, how are you? Great, thanks. How are you? Yeah, really good, thank you. Really good, thanks for asking. Um, I don't like to waste any time, Sam, I'll be honest with you. So let's dive straight in. Tell us what you do and how long you've been doing it for. Yeah, so uh, here at Does QA, we're a test automation tool, so built for um, anyone who builds a web app, anyone who has an e-commerce website or anything that you use the web for, um, is to make sure that you're delivering great quality software to your users. So um, your direct value stream, your end users are getting the best experience possible and we provide the tooling that does that efficiently. Amazing. Now, for those of us who are thinking, um, I really don't know what that means. Is there a simpler way of explaining? If I'm a customer and I go onto a website, an e-commerce website, what's my experience? What bit do you do? Yeah, so let's say you've gone onto a shopping website, you've added a product to your bag, and then you want to enter a discount code and you enter it and it accepts it, but doesn't take the discount off. You're now like a frustrated user. You're expecting the site to work in a certain way. It's meant to be intuitive, but it doesn't work, right? You've you've got to the end of your journey and you can't complete it. So... Yeah. As a as the company, they should have asserted that 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 feature, that functionality they provided you works before it got to you. The user shouldn't be the person that tests the website. There should be there should be steps before it that assert that the quality is is up to standard. Yeah, yeah. You've lost the customer then. If I put exactly. something in the bag, yeah, absolutely. If I put something in the bag and I can't buy it, um, it's 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 gone. I've talked myself out of it. I don't need it anyway. So you've lost that customer. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah. So a lot of things around quality is like it's it's very much like an investment. You invest early on, and the benefits you reap are massive. But if you don't don't invest at the start, you're left trying to chase um yeah. chase that the, that goal, which is always difficult and stressful. You don't want your site going wrong with with your users using it. No, no, not at all, not at all. And how long have you been doing it for? So personally, I've actually been been in the testing space for well over a decade. Um, worked at large e-commerce companies, fintech companies, automotive companies, all sorts of yeah. different uh, sort of regions and uh, roles. But uh, the, it's the same common problem in every single one um, was that they invest a lot in quality, but they don't get the value out of it. And that's a shame, really, because it's expensive to to have good quality. Well, it's yeah. perceived as expensive, but it's because the value that you get from it has not been up to, up to scratch, really. Right. Right. So over a decade and how long has does QA been in, in existence? So we actually launched uh, publicly at the start of this year. So uh, earlier this year, we actually launched publicly. Um, our first uh, major retailing brand joined us straight away. Uh, and since then, we've grown outside the UK borders. We've got customers in Spain, France, US, um, Asia, loads and loads of different loads of different regions and places. Uh, everyone's using does really uh, across the world. Fantastic. So you told us um, you've you've let us know that you've been within the industry for over a decade. But what motivated you to start your own business? Yeah. So uh, I touched on this a little bit earlier. Was around that I've been in. That everyone's doing the same thing. So you you build this team out. They they basically build an app to test your app. You then spend all this money doing it. Then for whatever reason they move on, or the project finishes and they move on then you start the cycle all over again. There's no handover. Everything just gets done over and over again. Um, so I spoke with uh, my other co-founder and we we were like, there's got to be a better way of doing this. There's got to be a way of handing this over so that when a tester leaves a business, they leave behind all that domain knowledge, all that great stuff that's, that's invaluable to a business for the next person just to pick up. Um, so yeah, it's sort of like everyone's doing the same thing this this cycle we want to break that cycle so you start delivering value from day one not day 100 um in the quality process amazing um has it been everything that you hoped it would be have you been as uh disruptive as you as you'd liked or like yeah um yeah i'd say so so uh, uh one thing was that we both came from a really strong development background so marketing and outreach and things like that we weren't super comfortable uh going out to people and talking right. to them so um we found when we built the product it was great we want to show everyone but then we're like, how do we show everyone because we've never sort of done this before so i'd say yes but with a caveat of i wish we did certain things a bit different earlier we've sort of caught up with that now we lost i'd say like six months worth of good time 
because we're like now what do we do we've built something now we need to market it so yeah i'd say it has been everything we hoped for yeah um but yeah. but with but with learnings along the way by the sound exactly that yeah we do touch on that we do touch on that but for now um what would you say makes you stand out in the industry um so another common theme was that this is expensive as i mentioned earlier like testing yeah. and quality assurance has got this this price tag associated to it so um what we've built is something that's unrivaled in, in pricing so we're 10 times cheaper than our nearest competitor by 10 times cheaper um and that's not that we're we're hemorrhaging money as a business we we just see that there's this massive overhead that these these big companies are charging um for each segment so we actually we're an all-in-one so we we do like multiple phases of the quality process right. whereas these these companies are charging 10 times just for one of those five phases um so yeah i'd say we, we have sort of stood out for the way we describe our tool is it's it's like the complex version the code version but without the code you don't need to know technology you just use the site as a user because that's how your users use it um right. and just get value instantly so you can get started straight away mm -hmm. value within five minutes not five days for five weeks right so um yeah that's sort of where we've we've absolutely um like flattened all of our competitors in terms of that is that we're we're uncompetable uh, on on that level oh amazing amazing how do you and and how are you going to um because once people catch wind of this um you know once people sort of realize oh okay actually there's a simpler way that we can do it or more streamlined or uh, we need to do what they're doing in order to keep up how are you going to stay um ahead of the game so um DuskyWay as a platform is constantly evolving. So we went live early in the, earlier in the year, but that was not nothing like what we've got today. And as we get more customers on board, we we our product is driven by our public roadmap. So our users and customers actually drive how we build the product. Um, it's un it's not opinionated, so it's completely unopinionated software. So we're not saying you should test this way. We're actually saying. How would you like to test or let's have a look at how you're testing and work collaboratively with all of our customers to then go ah this will be good to get this in so all the functionality is actually grown out grown out grown out with our customers help so it's actually just going to get better and better basically every every new customer we get brings new insights and new features come up come out of that so that's so exciting customer driven so your so your users are testing you and you're adapting to to that as you go that's that's really clever um what would you say that you could attribute your growth to yes yeah, so um i'd say it's great customer service from yeah. literally the first engagement so everyone that we've physically spoken to um either on a call or in person we care just because we know our industry we've well, been in it we we care so much about like this bad quality cloud above everyone that actually we're on the same page we understand the frustrations and then following that through their journey with them not sort of constantly shoving sales down their throat we're, we're actually like no let's let's provide value to you and then you can see that the value can be provided to yourselves um so yeah i'd say that sort of talking to people and being on their level and showing them the product can provide value for them and also the flip side is if the product's not for them, giving them recommendations for the certain area that they're doing elsewhere, that's not because we have a vision, right, for for our business, where we want to go. And there's things that live outside of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, for the things that live outside, we were saying, use these people or talk to these people that we know give also good customer service. And then one day they might come back to us and say, these guys are really helpful. They helped us in this segment. Now we need what does QA can do. Yeah, we'll come back to them. So yeah, that's worked really well for us. Um, yeah, for that. that's re that's really smart. That's really smart. How do you? One of the big, one of the most difficult things in sales um, is um, is explaining or convincing or or sort of um, influencing somebody around the the value of a of a product. Um, what's your magic there? What from a sales perspective? Um, it's it's fairly clear cut to be honest so uh if you've got a defect heavy site so a site that's really broken um yeah. those qas value is is instantaneous whereas if you've got a really well built site it's the same thing same value stream same 
same uh, output is that we can assert very, very quickly that you haven't broken something. So um, a lot of these big corporations have big development teams that are expensive to run. You want that to be running as efficiently as possible. So testing is a big part of that. And yeah, so we make it as streamlined as possible and as fast as possible to get through that. So um, that's that's where we we show, right? We show the value. We don't just tell people the value. We're like, give me your website. Let's let us at it, um, and we go and create loads and loads of tests over a very short period of time. Um, I mean, one migration project, for example, was fifteen thousand or so tests migrated oh, wow. in two days. Two days. It took them nine months to build it, wow. um, and we migrated it in two days into into Does QA. So oh, that's yeah. So show the value, and then yeah, then it's really up to them, right? It's people. Some people care about quality. Unfortunately, some people don't, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's that. Yeah, it's working with that. Um, how long would it take you to? Um, so two days to migrate, fifteen thousand tests. Um, how long does it then take to uh, fix those? Any fault? Any issues? Yeah. So um, it's one of our USPs. Is the way our test cases are formed are like branching user journeys. Right. So you imagine you hit like a login page. You can either forget your password or sign up or log in, right? There's three flows through that that one page. Yeah. Well, that's not three different tests in does. That's one test with three branches. So you can see how quickly you can go from one test to three tests and then go, oh, actually, what about incorrect password? There's, and then you've got all the other flows for that. So then that's 10 tests and then 20 and 50. So, and then maintenance wise, you're not doing this like record and playback where you mm-hmm. have to re-record your tests every time. You just go in and go, this button has changed and everywhere else that's now reliant on it changes also. So like I said, it's like the complex version, the code version. However, it's just we behind the scenes, obviously it's code. We, we, we've built a framework here, but yeah, trying to make it as simple and intuitive as possible. It's so important, well, especially having um, a lot of businesses, a lot of e-commerce businesses have control of their own website. So they will add things to their websites. They will change how their website look. Uh, look. They will um, add products, take products off, add sales add discount codes. So all of those things that a business owner is brilliantly uh, manipulating in their own business, but of course, with no insight potentially of then what happens with the customer. So exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's fast feedback. So yeah. it's all about being, being a lot of people use this term agile, right? Everyone wants to be really agile, yeah. really quick, really small incremental changes. And yeah. part of that is having really fast automation um, on average, a test pack that would take like three days to run takes seven to 12 minutes and does as well. So oh, wow. every single sort of segment you look at, cause we run all of our tests at the same time. So you have 10 tests, hundred tests, a thousand tests. They all run at the same time. So it's, um, we have a like basically a no scaling problems with does either. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so you have been incredibly busy over the last nine months, particularly. Um, how do you, as a business owner, balance your personal um life with running a business? I love this question. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's actually got more and more difficult as it's gone on when we've gone multinational, because uh we're from all the way from like Asia early in the morning, right through to the middle of the day for the UK, and then into the yeah. evening, the US wakes up. So we we actually, um, between me and my other co-founder, sort of like a bit more of a tag team kind of approach with that is that because we we want to offer outstanding support and things like that is we're always available, but it ends up turning into very, very long days. One thing we've sort mm-hmm. of adopted as a business is no meeting Fridays. So on Fridays, no meetings, no client meetings, nothing. So it lets us get some home stuff done if we had home stuff to do or yeah. um, any work that we had outstanding and stuff like that. So and same with the weekends. We don't really do meetings on the weekends. So it's very much work week and then weekend is, is family and, and home time. But yeah, it's full days, 16 plus hour days. That's yeah, it's busy. I've literally got a mental picture of you guys literally high-fiving as one of you goes home from the day shift and then the other <laughs> comes in for the night shift. Because of course, if you are able to service the globe, then you need to be awake 24 hours a day. Yep. Yeah, all the time. It's always there's always something going on. Um, it's yeah, it's pretty magical. Once once we started to gain more and more traction, um, it, it was really cool to see. Like you'd if you woke up in, in the middle of the night, like three a.m., you'd have a look and go, "Hold on a minute, there's like five hundred tests running right now for someone 
born in the US and like, wow that's cool like it's 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 pretty magical yeah it's pretty cool how do you not get tempted to to see what's going on to check those check those numbers in the middle of the night if it's not your night shift how yeah. do you hold yourself back um well we don't that's the problem yeah. we have we have uh we have really good um observability so another thing with um with the business is sort of a takeaway is really from the get-go have really good observability so know what your users are doing know what pages they're on any errors that they get you capture those and you tell yourself those like and keep track because we're selling a quality product that tests quality of another site it'd be catastrophic if if dusk ua wasn't good quality itself so we we are up there on our a game on observability so yeah there's always like dashboards and alerts and graphs and everything that's all going on in the background that that you always you, you should constantly want to watch right it's 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 fascinating really yeah exactly seeing that data um and having that data available to you um because yeah as you said um that your your product is quality to be able to deliver that yourself is critical um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah um and we touched a little bit a bit on this earlier um around learning so it sounds like you you are agile and you're learning and um moving as you go but what would you say has been your biggest learning sam um so we knew our market we knew yeah. what we wanted to do in our market um but we didn't get the feelers out early enough i feel so so um, we have a, we are a disruptor in the space, um, but we didn't start disrupting it early enough. So we built the product sort of in a dark room, locked away, um, and then it is customer driven now, very much so. But I feel if we engaged earlier, we would have gained traction quicker. So getting because people all around the all, all around the globe act differently; they all got different user experiences, different things. So I'd say it's very much when you become a founder of a, a startup is that if you're a developer. You need to quickly learn to be a marketing manager, yeah. a, a HR support workers, everything all in one really quickly. But I think the core fundamental is just be human um, for a lot of it is that good support and good management and good things like that is all around to you being approachable as a business. People mm -hmm. don't see you as this big, bold industry thing. If you act like you're bigger than you are, then it, it, I, I don't. I don't agree with that. We are, yeah, personal in touch with every one of our clients and that works really well. Yeah, so yeah I'd say market from day one. Like, even if you know your market, start marketing from day one. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so important. What's your strategy around marketing now then? So is that something that you've taken on and and, and your co-founders taken on the sales side of it? Like how do you split the roles um, between you so that you know that it is being done um exceptionally yeah. well. um so we actually work as um work as a team on this it's it depending on the the client or the format so we have um normal outreach so google ads running across the globe all day every day um but a lot of our success in the uk has been around talking to people and then people talking to other people and then talking to us so um a lot of the customer engagements are sort of shared between me and the co-founder we both have the same vision we both have the same like personality in that way so um both approachable so we we just try and split it that way uh, obviously at certain times it gets very very busy like when you you start stacking client meetings on top of each other it gets very busy but again that's just all around organization and we both have the shared we have the shared dream so um yeah Shared dreams, shared goal, um, yeah. shared responsibility. No, I like it. I like it. Um, where do you guys see yourself in the next five years, would you say? Um, so there's there's like a um almost a what we'd say is like a hockey stick uh moment in in the in the business. And you never know when you, the hockey stick's gonna appear or things like that. So um, but we've gone through like the whole proof of concept phase, the beta phase, the live phase. Now we're accumulating traction in the market. I'd love to see in five years' time us having like a decent market share or even just – it's like one of those things. Once you hear someone talk about your business, I think that uh, that would be my absolute dream is approaching like they didn't know me as the co-founder of Dusk UA and I'm going, have you seen this call, Dusk UA? And I'd be like, I haven't, actually. Do you want to tell me about it? Like That, that would be 
you know what I mean like uh, um, amazing like if you're a musician you hear your your song in a, co- a coffee shop that's that yeah. sort of that sort of feeling yeah yeah that, that would be amazing um but we're just constantly advancing we're dynamic the does QA product is 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 following trends and uh we're we're not going down the whole AI route and things like that right now um because we want you to be in control um mm. but that might that might change depends on how how our customers how our customers want to use the product yeah, no, I love that. I love your uh, does QA on on somebody's lips as they approach you, like listening to your song on the on the radio for this for the first yeah. time. Um, I always like to end with um, this question, Sam, if I may. Um, do you have any words of advice for any business owner in a similar situation to yourself um, who is also looking to grow? Yeah, um, I think again. So matching your marketing with observability. So if you market in a certain area, have a like refined and defined approach to it so you can say right i've spent this much money here this is my expectation and therefore we can class it as a success or failure um it's really easy to fall into the um like the survivor bias of right i've marketed via google ads here and it works so i'm never going to market with facebook ads here but if you came up with a like a, a measured approach and go right google brings in three conversions a day let's say uh, for Facebook, I want three conversions a day. And then you can have a measured approach because there's different people in these different regions, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Google are problem finders. They're like, I've got a problem, give me a solution. Whereas people on Facebook are more browsers. So you might find a completely different customer base um, by advertising elsewhere. But the key thing is measure because <laughs> otherwise you'll have this bias of like, oh, it works here, so I'll stay here. Um, and you'll stagnate. Yeah. I think you're right. Um, And especially with the way that your business works, where you want the insight of different um, different voices coming in so that you can evolve and grow. Um, So observability, you've mentioned it a couple of times. And I know I just said that that was my last question, but I feel that you will just have a brilliant, um, a brilliant example here Uh, for marketing and for measuring marketing. um, What's the what's the basics that that we're going to want as a business owner to be able to sit? Yeah, so making sure if you're using Google, for example, say it's sticking the Google suite, you've got like Google ads and then having uh, Google Analytics tied to the ads account. So you'll be able to say this ad had 30 clicks and see those clicks on your site right. and make sure then you can see those user journeys through your site and start to start to do th- different things. And then there's there's other tooling that you can actually bolt on top to like record user sessions and things like that. So then you can start to see on your website, oh, hold on a minute, they're hovering over this button, but they're not clicking it. And then they're scrolling all the way down and clicking this one. Maybe we'll move this one to the top. So it makes you have, again, really agile, quick paced, small changes. And then you can measure, like I say, always measured yeah. with the observability yeah. to make it work. So, yeah. Yeah, you can make the changes as you go. And I promise that was my last question. Um, So I just want to say that it has been an absolute pleasure learning more about Does QA, uh, what it is that you do. And I'm really excited for your journey ahead. I have no doubt that somebody is going to come up to you and say, oh, my gosh, have you seen this in uh, less than five years time? So, Sam, thank you so much for joining me. And um, I will make sure that this is posted. Lots of insights here for other business owners. So thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you.